How's everybody? Hey, good, good, good. My name is John Shirley, and I live in Kansas City, and I work for a church called The Gathering Network there. And The Gathering Network is a network of missional communities who exist to make wrong things right in the name and the way of Jesus. And that is our mission statement, and my senior pastor would be glad that I know that. So, as the worship leader. Uh, In 1999, I was touring in a band called Nickel and Dime, and that means something to some of you who were at A&M in 1995. You you caught that. You were there. And uh, things were going really well for us. We were touring around. We were playing conferences. We were playing youth groups, camps. I mean, we were on the circuit. And in that season of my life, right before we were about to sign a major record deal, the Holy Spirit got in my ear and said, John, you are carrying water to the sea here. It was the first time in my life, in a season of my life, that I had studied Jesus, that I had studied him seriously And just a review and an audit of his life caused me to review and audit my life. And I came to the conclusion that every single person in my world looked like me, thought like me, believed like me, and talked like me. I didn't know a widow. I didn't know an orphan. I didn't know a sick person. And Jesus literally ruined my life. He ruined my life, ruined my career, kind of for the first time, told me, you are going to work and pray to see deserts bloom. My wife and I live in in a desert of sorts right now. Um, We live in what we would call a post-Christian neighborhood. 50 years ago, our street was probably empty on a Sunday because everybody was at church. It's definitely not that way now. I'll tell you this little story. My next door neighbor, his name is Lance Ford. And he's an author, a Christian author, uh, actually a missional author, writes books with a guy named Alan Hirsch and guys like that. And I did not know Lance before we bought our home. And that's just a strange Jesus thing that happened there. But uh, Lance, when he bought his house, the the sold sign goes up in the front yard and uh, our neighbors to kind of uh, directly across the street from him, catty corner from us, two guys named Doug and Troy, super nosy, they, uh, they somehow, before he moved in and before they met him personally, they somehow got some tax records or something and got his name and Googled him. And they were like, oh no, we have a Christian pastor moving in, right? Six months later, I bought my house. My sold sign goes you know, up, up, up in the front yard. They somehow figured out who I was. They Googled me and they're like, oh no, we got a Christian recording artist moving in and a Christian embassy is coming to 57th and Rock Hill. And they started to basically share with all of our neighbors, the Christians are coming, the Christians are coming. (laughs) And our very good friends now who kind of live catty corner to us across the street, two doors down from him, Hillary and Matt, literally, literally, they told us just this last week, they seriously contemplated selling their home. That's the environment that we live in. And truth be told, it's probably an environment close to where you live as well. I don't know if you feel it, but it's happening in America. There's a trajectory. There's a trajectory happening right now. And it is probably leaning forward to something that looks like life after Christendom. And that means something to me in my life because I do what you do. I spend all week long planning services, praying through what we're gonna do on Sunday, printing out the charts, setting it all up, talking to the band, what are we gonna do? And we work, we work really hard for excellence. We write a lot of original music. We work really, really, really hard for it. Sunday comes, I get everything in my car, I pull to the end of my driveway, and right as I'm about to turn left into a 20 minute trip outside of my neighborhood, I am always struck with the reality that my neighbors are never going to that service with me. That is a problem if the mission of the church is to have people come to it. 
It's a problem for the mission of my life. If the mission of my life is to expose people to the wonderful, blessed, good news of the kingdom of God only if they come to me. Am I the only one in the world that feels this? Have any of you, any of you ever stood in front of your church and you, man, the band is just bringing the jam, you know? And you got it on lock. It's awesome. Everybody's in a lane. Everybody's just playing their heart out. And it's just, I mean, the people, it's just like, it's good. It's wonderful. It's the spirit of God. There's an environment going on where God is doing things and it's incredible. And the only thing you can think about is everybody that's not in the room. And you are standing there going, we're going to be sweaty when we leave here. We're worshiping Jesus so hard. And we're going to baptize four people this year. A church that worships with the fervency that my church worships with should see justice rain down on our city. We should be able to move into our city and see the good news of the kingdom of God come to bear where we live. And we rarely do because we keep expecting everybody to come to us. And it's because we've been trained in one mode, one mode which is a Christendom mode, which is everyone comes to us and something essential has been lost. I know this may sound crazy and honestly, I've been nervous about talking to you today. They invited me here to tell you all this stuff. I, I, I don't know, I feel like I might be a little bit off center, but I literally sometimes envision Jesus coming alongside my life's work, which is leading people corporately in worship, which I love to do. I do it. It's what I have given my life to do. And I see him stand beside it. And I see him say, hey, is that, is that really what you thought I wanted you to do? I mean, you've read the documentation of my life. You've read the documentation of my life. Everything that I gave my life to do all the places that I went, all the things that I did. And you wanna to sing to me a lot. And I just wanna say, I, I affirm singing to Jesus. I've given my life to that. I write those songs. But I just see Jesus standing to the side and saying, John, don't miss the age you are in. There will be a day there will be a day when Jesus returns and we will live in, in eternity with him. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess and the nations will gather around his throne and we will bless him and worship him. But we live today in a redemptive time of history in the now and the not yet where we are to give our lives to make disciples who can make disciples who can make disciples who can make disciples disciples because that is the redemptive work of the church and we should absolutely sing we should absolutely sing but the problem is is if that's the only lane that we run in if that's the only lane that we run in and we call our vocation our call we might have missed it what if Jesus is saying your vocation is your vocation you're a songwriter you're a worship leader your call is to make disciples on mission. I think something is happening right now. And I can look around the room and I can see some of you kind of nodding your head, you know? And I'm just wondering, I'm here today to speak to the five of you who have a frog in your throat right now. You're on the verge of tears going, this guy's saying the stuff that keeps me up at night right now. Because something is happening in the church right now that feels like you're waking up out of sleep by a hunger pang. Anybody ever woken up out of sleep hungry? And some of us are waking up out of a mode that has maybe grown a little sleepy. We expect everyone to come to us. And there's a hunger in you. There's a profound hunger in you to 
incarnate the life of Jesus where you live. And you don't know how, but I wanna pray for us today because that's all I have time to do. I believe that Jesus could change the destiny of our lives on a 30 second prayer. And I just wanna ask you, if this is resonating with you, I'm gonna ask you to do something crazy. I'm gonna ask you to stand up. It won't be everybody. It just will not be everybody, okay? And it shouldn't be everybody. I think that God is, is in this time, in this moment of history, he's simply saying to some of us who have apostolic hard wiring, he's simply saying, I wanna unbind you a little bit and I'm gonna begin to speak to you over the next couple of years how to, how to converge your vocation and the call to make disciples, how we can do that, where worship becomes more like war in your house for your neighbors. As you come back to gather with all of us at the Red Hot Center and the big celebration services, when you sneeze out into the world, just like Jehoshaphat sending people to the front lines, you know, where worship looks like war for people, not against them. So Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus, that these apostles who are here, God, I pray that you just begin to unbind them. We pray for your creativity. We affirm singing and songwriting. We affirm Jesus, our, our, our vocation to stand before you and bless you and to lean hard into your heart. But God, I'm asking you now that you would touch some of my brothers and sisters who are here who want to live like missionaries with a guitar in their hand, and we don't know how, help us be disciple makers, help us be world changers, help us see the kingdom come to hard places, and we ask this in the wonderful, blessed, world-changing name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.